One year ago this weekend, Denny Hamlin was making his first bush start for Joe Gibbs. Today, you're on the pole. Describe what it means to not only you, but your team. Uh, it means a whole lot. I mean, these guys have... Uh... In the world of NASCAR, where speed, skill, and strategy collide, there exists a paradox that defies expectations and defines the driver's career. 18 full-time seasons in NASCAR, and Denny Hamlin has won everything but a championship. If Denny Hamlin is going to make a statement saying, if the drive for Clyde is alive, you're going to have to come through me. Has put together an amazing race. He's led 142 laps, and he wins the night race in Bristol. You? Oh, man, I just, uh, everybody likes a winner, right? So it's, uh, can't thank this whole FedEx team enough. Just... So are these fans motivation for you? There's a lot of booze out there. I'd be your favorite driver. And who would that be? All of them. <laughs> Timmy Hamlin. He's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. Um, he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, he's terrible. He's just terrible. And he's sees one opportunity and he, he takes it, but obviously um, you know, he's got the fastest car every week and he runs 10, so. Jason Leffler is kicked out of his JGR ride and is replaced by Terry Labonte, as well as Bush Series driver for them at the time, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin would beat Leffler in top 10s by his second race of the year, getting his first career top 10 at Charlotte, along with a pole and two more top 10s in his last five races. Following this, Hamlin would drive the 11 full-time in 2006. Danny Hamlin, but that's why. Look that's what, what you can do. Look what a difference it made, Wally. Two car lengths drove him by the 48. The season starts with fireworks. Danny Hamlin, the rookie, wins the Budweiser shootout. Coming out of turn three for his second career win. He sweeps at Pocono. Denny Hamlin, the race winner of the Pennsylvania 500. Denny Hamlin would make the chase in this rookie season. And after his second place at Martinsville, with four races remaining, he sat fourth place in points, down only 47 to leader Matt Kenseth. But after an eighth place run in Atlanta and a tenth at Texas, he would still be in fourth place, but down 80. Unfortunately, two straight third place finishes at the end of the year wasn't enough for him to get the championship, leaving him to settle with third in his first full-time season. Body plus for him and uh, they deserve to be champions. They were the best throughout this chase. And um, as far as our race team, I, I can't say enough for them. They they've done a great job with me all season. And you know, Mike uh, is a deserving crew chief of a championship and you know, hopefully I'll get him one in the future. You think it was more what they did with you or what you did with them this year? I think it's a, a lot of both. I mean, you got the you know the rookie and me and, and the experience uh, Mike Ford. And you know, the combination is great. And um, you know, he's a, not only my crew chief, he's a great friend and the family of his and Robin. And, um, I can't say enough for all of them. At the end of the race, were you thinking we're not going to get the championship? Or were you thinking I got to get second place? Yeah. Thing is second. Uh, you know, I think uh, Matt was running seventh and. Um, you know, I, I needed to uh, win the race regardless to uh, to move up and um, just came up a little short at the end. Uh, Martin got a great restart and, um, you know, I got a run on Casey, but, uh, you know, it was not enough. My main goal was try to keep that 29 behind me. Great season for the 11 bunch and Denny Hamlin and the word uh, around here is there will probably be many more. Matt? Hamlin gets one win, coming at the first New Hampshire race, leading to his second career chase appearance. Kyle Petty got the worst of this. There's the contact. Looks like he, oh, man. Looks like, oh. looks like he just got right into the back of Kyle Petty. Just got real aggressive behind Kyle Petty. Got right up on his back. Those car lift him up, got him loose. He just pretty doggone aggressive. Those block on board him. Clint Boyer's car. Yeah, he just hits Kyle coming off the corner. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Looks like Clint got some damage. He would collapse with five finishes of 20th or worse, 
relegating him to a 12th place points finish. Larry, though, Larry, he got a slow car in front of you. Gordon's coming, coming. He's looking to the high. He's going to diamond it off, but it's not going to. It's too little, too late. The grandfather clock chimes for Denny Hamlin. He beats Jeff Gordon. Jeff Burton. 99, Jimmy Johnson. 99 out of fuel. Oh, and Tony Stewart. Great job, Mike. He had the exact same stat line as 2007, but his one win this time came at Martinsville, and again, he would make the chase. Five extra bonus points, looking for a win here. His first at Talladega, never won here before for Tony Stewart. Been pretty racy, top 10 for a while. We have trouble. Guys. Close out, yellow, yellow, yellow. Denny Hamlin in the wall, the leader, another problem now. You okay, front. Denny? Leading the race, let's watch again what happened. Watch, watch the right front. Oh, that is a hard right. impact. Mike? And guys, the 11 team certainly disappointed with the way this season has ended up. Denny Hamlin said earlier this week, he said, look, our goals coming into the season have been for the last couple of years to make the chase, but that's about as far as we've been able to get. And it's to the point, he says, where we really need to step it up. We need to set our goals a little bit higher. We need to be able to contend for championships. Because of that, he said, we need to make a few changes on this team. Unfortunately, he added that it's a little bit political at Joe Gibbs Racing right now, and it doesn't look like they'll be able to make all the changes they want to make for 2009. Mike Ford told me this morning the changes they will make will only be minor, but certainly Denny Hamlin appeared a little bit frustrated earlier this week when he commented like that, saying that we do need to step it up and be a little bit better moving forward. It has been a very difficult week for Denny Hamlin. He lost his grandmother a couple days ago. Very emotional. Didn't want to be here. Wanted to be with the family. But today, Denny Hamlin goes to victory lane for the first time in 2009. And out of turn four, the checkered flag goes to Denny Hamlin. He wins it at Richmond. Two wins in the regular season allowed him to make another run at a championship and two top fives in the first three races of the chase had Denny Hamlin sitting in sixth place, only 99 points behind Mark Martin with seven races to go. Denny Hamlin spinning around contact. Trying to figure out what it is. We, it's, uh, he said the engine light, but he just complained that he didn't think was sputtering and didn't want to run. And uh, Dave, you're down there. You bet, guys. And they believe, according to the crew, that they dropped a valve. Uh, and uh, that will prevent them from continuing right now. They are going to go to the garage and try to repair from here. There are some things that you can do if you drop a valve and make it limp to the end of the race. And right in front oh, this, of these guys. Oh, man, he better hold that thing down there. And Denny Hamlin will take the win. Johnson second. Denny Hamlin. But folks, the story is history being made by a driver, Jimmy Johnson. There win, comes baby. Hamlin. Oh, win. Open up the history books, folks. On a November night in 2009, Jimmy Johnson is a four-time cup history. winner. He became unbelievably inconsistent in the remaining races, leaving him fifth place in the final standings. Gano, Hamlin, inside, Jeff Gordon. Can't is it the duck on the corner? Here comes Hamlin. Hamlin. Got him. Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano take the white flag. The oh, next flag ends it. Entering the year, Hamlin would tear his ACL in a basketball game and would have to wait until after his first one of the year at Martinsville to get surgery. Hamlin put together the most dominant season of his career so far after that. Denny Hamlin. All we do is win. Wins the Showtime Southern 500. Hamlin is good on the bottom, but that 18 is good on the top, and he blocks him. Oh, he put a block he on put him in the wall. He put him in the wall. But he's not going to quit, but here comes the 48 and the 2 of Kirkwood. Oh. In the last 10 races, no one has been more dominant than Denny Hamlin. There and around the corner, and he'll be looking at the checker flag for a sixth win. Through the first half of the chase, Hamlin sat in second after five finishes of 12th or better, only down 41 to Jimmy Johnson. And with the win at Martinsville, a ninth place run at Talladega, and his eighth win of the year at Texas, 
He had a 33 point lead over Johnson with two races remaining. At the end of the race, comes home in 12th. Look at him. And you can't blame him. Not at all. No, he did everything as a driver you can possibly do. Came out here, dominated this race. It's just so frustrating, things that you can't handle. Doc? Yeah, he comes here and dominates a race, leading 190 laps and then uh, climbs out of the car. Denny, I know, I just can't imagine uh, the emotions you're feeling right now. What are the thoughts? Um, yeah, it's pretty disappointing. Uh, we, uh, we're in a good position there uh, to, to look pretty good at going into next week. And uh, now we got just out racing next week. You still have a 15-point lead headed to Homestead. You said at the beginning of the chase, if we can keep it close going to Homestead, as good as this team is there, we think we've got them. Uh, now what about next week? What is the mindset? I don't know. I, you know, good cars and all that. Uh, we had all that today, and things didn't work out strategy-wise. So, uh, you know, it's tough to say. It's tough to say what we uh, we got to do. We, we did what we had to do today. Just uh... Denny's on the low side of the track trying to get underneath Biffle. Oh, trouble. trouble, and it involves Hamlin. The championship points leader goes around, and can he save it? Caution is out. He keeps it off the wall. That's a lot of damage to that right front. You know, coming this close is, is tough, especially the, the small little things that could have changed the outcome of this chase in one lap. Um, but, uh, you know, that part of it hurts, but uh, that's, you got to get better at all aspects, and, and that's, I feel like that's where the, that team's been, the 40 team's been strong over the last few years. They, they really have no weak spots. Hamlin washes up the racetrack. Here comes Matt Kenza to the inside. He cannot make it stick. Immediately after his best season to date, Hamlin would put up his worst, setting career lows in top fives and top tens, along with his worst ever average start and average finish. He saw victory lane once that year in the first Michigan race. Hamlin would once again make the chase, but he would have a lackluster performance en route to a 9th place points finish. The 11 team saw massive improvement from the year prior. He would find victory lane immediately in the year, and he didn't slow down after. Following the sixth race of the chase, Hamlin sat third in points, only down 20 to Johnson, entering his best track in Martinsville. Kenny, it's Dale Jarrett. We were just showing the fans of your four wins here, and even beyond that, it seems like every race when you weren't winning, you were a factor in it. So just how outstanding your career has been here, and it leads us to our mailbag. Ricky from Logan, West Virginia asks, since Martinsville is one of your best tracks, how big would a win be for you and your team going into this final stretch of the chase? Well, I think, uh, you know, I've said before that uh, this weekend is a must win. Uh, you know, we need to win this one. We need to win one more to definitely put ourselves in a spot. But really, you kind of look at it, uh, and if we win out, all four of them, there's no way we can't win the championship. So, Say split ticket, Alan. I did. That's something to do with election day. That's Denny Hamlin right there, and he approved that message. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. That lead. Here we go. We're going to take advantage of that uh, opening that was left there. It's Vickers dropped back to third now. Casey came and passed him. 
And Denny Hamlin, after falling from third back to eighth, was back up to speed, and now he's just slowed again in that 11 car. Three more behind these guys, hold your line. Caution, it's for the 11 car. And it comes out with 100 miles. Everything is black, Every age is black, I don't know. Denny Hamlin, that 11 car you see being passed by Brad Kozlowski. Sounds like that car's down a cylinder and off the pace. Tough way to end what's been a tough chase for Hamlin, who had such high hopes of competing for the championship and maybe holding the big trophy tonight. And punk team, when he gets down to turn one and two, spins Joey around and uh, tempers flared after the race. Hamlin out of line. Hamlin, uh, you've got to give and take in this sport. He gave, he didn't take. Turn one and two. Teammates last year, rivals this year. Friends, maybe never. But Tommy Logano and Eddie Hamlin Hamlin there, but got onto the bottom, trying to hold his ground. That's no good to look away, but he, he's been running good on the bottom. If he can just clear Hamlin right there, oh, he's going to lose his momentum. He's going to be so tall, he's going to be coming back in. After an injury sustained in that crash, Hamlin would miss five races causing him to miss the chase for the first time in his career, finishing 23rd in points. He did, however, keep his win streak alive after winning the final race of the year at Homestead. Car here right now, knows he needs to get out front. Most of these drivers, speaking of Dale Jr. and Denny Hamlin, haven't won this year, looking to end their season on a great note. Dominated the second half of the race along with Dale Jr. Held him off at the end. Checker flag. Career win, 23. Denny Hamlin, your winner at Homestead Miami Speedway. Come. Whoa, whoa. Trouble, trouble. Justin Allgaier. Here we go. Caution wave. Caution. Caution's out. Caution's out. Stay in front here, stay in front. Caution is out. There's so it, debris here on the front. At the moment of caution, at the moment of caution, where every driver was at, yeah. that's pretty yeah. much yeah. where they came yeah. And Denny Hamlin has to come around to the flag. In the first year of NASCAR's new win and you're in playoffs, Hamlin would get a win in the spring Talladega race, and he would go through the playoffs with no issues, advancing to NASCAR's first Final Four race the vibrations and so on so here we go for second place Denny Hamlin starting to work over Kevin Harvick the 11 cars speed Denny's talked about it other people in the garage have looked at what they call lap tracker comparing the lap times of every car of every lap on the track during practice they say this 11 car speed is all run speed and how about this move by Joey Logano in the 22? Try to get two of them at once. I mean, that was a strong move. I mean, he really drove that car down. In the racetrack. Staying green. Here he goes. Harvey's going to run. That's wide. Harvick leads. Lap car ahead, Landon Castle. Will he yield the top or the bottom? In his 10th try at a championship, Hamlin would earn another win at Martinsville, locking himself into the playoffs. 
Upper cross is over. Hamlin, he gives Hamlin a hit, and Denny holds on to win. Yeah. Hamlin's five wins here are at, are his most at any track, and he becomes the fifth different winner of 2015. Capture the flag, buddy. Capture the flag. NASCAR is notifying the 11 team they have to work up a plan to fix that hatch. And so Denny Hamlin waving out the window, letting the drivers know he needs to get down to the bottom of the track so that he can get to pit road. It's not as easy as just waving your hand, though. You see Denny Hamlin running it almost 200 miles an hour. Now he's down and will make his way to pit road. They will try to fix that escape hatch just above the driver. The four not going. They wreck behind him. The green flag is out as they cross the start finish line. Will they throw the caution? Trying to get back up to speed. Caution comes out. Now the question is, who was stay, in stay front? In front of them. Stay in front of them. Stay in front of them. Safety to the drivers. That's why they threw the caution. NASCAR wants these races to end under green. But you have drivers making heavy contact. Staring at the scoring right now, which is unofficial. First off, let's start with that last restart and the crash. What happened? Four could only run about 30 miles an hour, so I think he uh, saw people coming and he, he knew he was probably going to be 30th last car on the lead lap, so uh, caused the wreck. And you know, but that's nor here nor there. We uh, we had a self-inflicted day. We uh, it took us four times to uh, get our roof fixed, and uh, unfortunate. I mean, we're feel like a done everything I possibly could do to uh, to advance but the uh, you know just one bad race in a three race season uh, obviously takes you out so it's um, frustrating knowing that uh, we very well could have won ne next week but uh, I don't know I really can't spend any positive on it right now after being eliminated following the round of 12 a ninth place points finish was what Hamlin would have to settle for he wants that four car to help him. Here he goes. Next flag ends the race. I just don't think he can do it he from the outside. He might get up to third, maybe second. I just don't know if he's going to get all the way up to the lead, but here he comes. Got to run down the back. It's going to be a drag race off turn four, but I just don't see him being able to pull it off. He's Still getting no a big push. No he's game. getting a big he's push. He's coming. He's coming. He's up to second. Hamlin to second. Up high. Watch the inside. Watch the inside. Mark Truex. Jr. Three wide. Truex to the bottom. All right. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, red. Kansas saves it. Here they come to the line. This is the finish of the Daytona 500. Come on. Side by side. Bouncing off each other. Unbelievable. I think it was Denny Hamlin. I have it. It's Hamlin. What a finish. Hamlin. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Capturing his first 500 punched his ticket to the playoffs, and he would win two more times before the regular season concluded. Down minus seven to the cut line, Hamlin was eliminated following the cutoff race at Phoenix, finishing sixth in the standings. Can Denny Hamlin hold him off? The lap traffic's gonna come into- A win at New Hampshire got him into the playoffs, and another win at Darlington would bring him to two wins entering the round of 16. Elliott has the lead, but Hamlin looks to the inside! Elliott diving, trying to block! Down the back stretch again. Less than three to go. The bumper to the back of the 24. Oh, Elliott right. goes around. Hamlin takes the lead and the caution comes out. Third. Now here comes Boyer fighting back on the inside. A little bump there at the 18. Side by side as they come back to the strike. White flag in the air. Kyle Busch on the inside. Kyle Busch up the racetrack. He moves the 11 up. Here comes the 78 of Truex Jr. Over 130 miles an hour as they enter turn three, and Bumper goes to the back of the 11 again. Way up the racetrack. Oh, oh into the wall goes the 11. The 24. Pinch the 11 into the wall. A 7 tenths of a second lead over Martin oh, Jr. Is. And there went the tire. The 11 okay, goes into the, the wall. Keep it up there. 
it up there. And as we saw earlier with the 48s of Jimmy Johnson, that could be the championship hopes. His running with Elliott would once again leave him in sixth place in the standings. Up, Keselowski to the bottom of the racetrack, side by side for the lead here at Indy. They touch down the back straight away, side drafting. Denny Hamlin back to the corner panel, the two. What's going to happen down here in turn three? Denny Hamlin with the position, dives down in the corner, but Brad is still there. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Brad Keselowski, they touch again. Watch Eric Jones coming off turn four. These guys are going to get slow side by side. Keselowski will spot, but can Eric Jones get a run and get by? Hamlin endured his first winless season of his career, but still pointed his way into the playoffs, only to be eliminated after the round of 16 and finishing 11th in points. Hamlin had a new paint scheme for 2019 and a new crew chief replacing Mike Wheeler with Chris Gabehart in hopes of turning around the team after going winless for the first time in his career. The finish this time, Denny Hamlin wins his second Daytona 500 and wins it for Coach Gibbs in Toyota. In the 11 car. Oh, into the walls, the 22 of Logano. The 11 put the 22 of Logano into the walls, it came off a four. And there's some heavy smoke out of the 22, left rear tire right running. Oh, the left rear looks like it's going flat quickly. A lot of damage to Joey Logano. He's going to go up into the wall. Hold the brake, hold the brake. What was the altercation on track that led to it? Uh, I, uh, I I got close off of turn four. It looks like we got together, and, and it looks like collateral damage. He, he blew a tire, but I mean, he would probably say, ah, yeah, it's your track racing. You going to try and find him at this? No, I don't need to find him. for Denny Hamlin, this 11 team, the slow roll down pit road, and it's just spewing water everywhere. They're going to get the tape off of it at this point. Just kind of salvage what they can salvage here. Ford Goodyear tired, but man, look at all that water. It's losing speed. I don't know how long that... A piece of tape that was too big ruined his best season since 2010, finishing last of the Final Four. After a disappointing end to a career resurgence, Hamlin and the 11 team looked to repeat their 2019 success. Turn four for the final time. Blaney to the outside, oh. to the inside. Here comes Hamlin up the outside. Wow. Crash into the wall, into the air, goes oh. Newman. Upside down. In a shower of sparks on his roof. Scoring unofficial between Hamlin and Blaney as far as who crossed the finish line first. Here is the second closest finish in Daytona 500 history. The team the 24, they're gonna try to block. Eric, Eric in the it's wall. It's the wall. Now the 24, a big run. He slides. They make more contact. Three wide as they come out of four. Hamlin to the inside. Side draft coming from the 24 car. Denny Hamlin, William Byron. Stripe. And as they go across the stripe, a photo finish! 
And that so was Denny Hamlin saying, be ready to come to pit road. Yeah, and they, he said a moment ago, I'm worried about the brakes. Said he had a long pedal on the brakes. You know, you go back to Miami last year, Steve. That was them really needing the last 2%. Then he felt like they were in range to go win the race. Right now, they're in scramble mode. They're three seconds behind Chase Elliott. They've clearly got to get the car better. And in three and four, where Hamlin is right now, that's where he's struggling the most. That's where they struggled all day long. Again, he would get last place of the final four, failing to have the speed of the other three all day. Tony Hirschman is... Here we go. Kyle Busch needs to back it way up. The Levitt's coming to Pierre Rose, so Kyle Busch now takes over the lead, taking the white flag. White flag. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Does he... Hamlin went winless in the regular season this year, to a variety of reasons. Outside, but he's going to be off line. No, again, Opris goes in the grass. Now it's a battle for the lead with Hamlin and Allmendinger. Frisco will come back onto the grass. All clear now, though. He leads him into seven. Frisco right on the tail. We'll have to see how that's going. Stop and go. 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 Even though he was winless, he was able to secure a playoff berth on points, going for his first championship in his 16th try. That point will put Mark Truex Jr. back inside the championship four. Now Truex has to hold the one off at the 43 off, the one back to his rear bumper at the 48, continues to try to take the lead from the 11. Oh! The 11 around! The 11 goes around and the caution will come out. A wee start. Track to give him all the room I could, and he still can't drive. Too soon. That's a great launch from the five so far. The five surging out front. Can Truex clear Hamlin? He's going to do it. It all started. Hamlin did not get the launch he needed. Now Truex is in second. Larson, Truex, Hamlin, and Elliott. The championship. Third place again. Two early wins at Richmond and Charlotte for Hamlin would give him the opportunity to fight for a championship again. But a rivalry with Ross Chastain left Hamlin on the losing end when everything was settled. Ross has been all over the back of Denny and he finally just runs into him. They definitely moved him. Oh! Wow, oh, they're on his high. He really oh. <laughs> It was a show. They run down the race track, staying up the racetrack. Here comes the 11. They lean on each other a little bit, Chastain. Oh! oh. Hard into the wall. He goes around. He'll hit the inside wall as well. They want to know is that retaliation? That's just Hamlin saying, look, I'm not giving you any room. You haven't given me any room. This is a race for the win. You know, it's. Whatever happens, happens. I'm going to go up the racetrack. He didn't intentionally wreck him, but he sure ran him out of the groove. Midship four. Bell out of turn four. He's going to do it. He's won his way into the championship. Let's go get a championship. Right, right at the line. The one of Chastain past Hamlin. It was a video game move off into turn three. He put the car in the move 
that cost Denny a chance to go to his fifth championship four. Can you believe it came down that way? Yeah, I mean, you gotta you gotta execute all day, and we just didn't uh, control the race when we had control of it. Um, each caution, we just kept losing some spots, and um, he just struggled a little bit off too. But Larson, see, he's that's playing the closest that he's been. Closest he's been. He's gonna take a dive bomb. Will he go for it? Here he comes. Clear track ahead, Hamlin on the bottom. Now, Larson will have the momentum coming off the top. Denny's gonna have to lift again. Oh. In his 18th full-time season, this was Hamlin's 18th try at a championship, and it seemed like 2023 was his year. Take him now. He's gonna get to him, getting loose, he is loose. Got him loose, he got to wiggle it. They're gonna be side by side. Oh, Denny had to lift. He did. Oh, and Larson's in the wall. Oh my gosh. Barely tapped. Sure did. To the checkered flag, Hamlin wins Kansas after a fierce battle with Kyle Larson. Denny Hamlin, the 42-year-old from Chesterfield, Virginia, has put together an amazing race. He's led 119 laps, and he wins the night race at Bristol. I beat your favorite driver. And who would that be? All of them. Denny Hamlin! And behind this, Truex on those tires, he's gone. Oh, into the wall, hard as the 11th. Denny Hamlin, hard into the wall in turn one. Caution, 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 caution. Contact, big, big damage to the right front of that car. Something broke in the steering. Sports paradoxes like this teach us to expect the unexpected in NASCAR and to admire the dedication put into it. Denny Hamlin goes into 2024 0 for 18 and will continue his quest for that elusive championship. His story is a testament to the spirit of competition, the pursuit of excellence, and the unwavering belief that one day, he'll hoist the Bill France Cup.